Hello and welcome to this biology session. We'll be going over chapter 11 and for this chapter we're breaking it up into four sections because each section has so much detail. So there'll be a different video for each section. So we'll be starting today with the video on chapter 11, section 1. You're going to see practice questions on the screen. All of those are um, just to follow along with. There's no way for you to submit them or grade them. Okay, so chapter 11 again is introduction to genetics. So all of an individual organism's DNA came from its parents, but each individual has a different combination of DNA from the two parents, which gives them different traits, such as these different colored kittens that came from the litter. And also this litter of different colored puppies because they are too cute to leave out. The study of the way that traits are passed down from one generation to the next is called genetics. When studying inheritance, we study the work of Gregor Mendel. He had sets of pea plants with a variety of traits and bread plants with some traits, two plants with different traits, and then documented the traits inherited by the offspring. And this taught us a lot about how different genes are inherited. One conclusion that Mendel came to is that information passed down from parents to offspring is passed down in genes which control the traits that the individuals have. For example, all of his plants had genes that controlled the color of the seeds and they inherited those genes from their parents. And there are different versions of the genes. Different versions are called alleles. For example, some of the seeds in Mendel's plant were yellow, some of the seeds were green, and some were gray. So he was working with three different alleles of the gene that controlled seed color. Another important conclusion from Mendel's work is that often when there are two different alleles present in an organism, one of them is expressed as a trait that you can see and the other is hidden. The allele that is expressed is called the dominant allele and the one that is hidden is the recessive allele. For example, in Mendel's plants, if a plant received the allele for green seeds from each of its parents, the seeds were green. But if the plants received a yellow seed allele from one parent and a green seed allele from the other parent, the seed of the offspring was always yellow, never green. The allele for the yellow is dominant and green is recessive. So if they're in the same plant, you'll always see yellow and you'll never see green. We're going to be talking a lot about dominant and recessive alleles and doing diagrams with them and when we do this the dominant alleles are always given capital letters and recessive alleles are given lowercase letters and we will be using the following examples for color so when we're talking about the color of the seeds we're going to use a capital A for dominant and a lowercase a for recessive and with this specific version, the colors, yellow is dominant, so that'll be a capital A, and green is recessive, so green will be a lowercase a. That may seem kind of um, strange, um, like why wouldn't we just put Y and G for yellow and green? But because it's the same gene, we need to use the same letter. So we use the same letter and use a capital for dominant and lowercase of that letter for recessive. And it doesn't really matter what letter we go with, so I picked A. An important concept for understanding inheritance is the segregation of alleles. Every individual has two of every gene, one from each parent. But then when that individual reproduces, 
reproduces, it goes to make reproductive cells, those two copies of the gene split up so that the egg or sperm only has one copy. So most cells in the body of the plant or the animal or the person have two copies of the genes, but when it makes eggs or sperm, they're split up, so each of those cells only has one copy. This splitting up of the two alleles is called segregation. Mendel bred yellow seeded plants to green seeded plants, and all of the offspring of the first generation had yellow seeds. None of them had green seeds. And he wanted to know if that genetic information for green seeds was still there in the plant somewhere, or if it had disappeared. So to find out, he crossed the offspring of that generation, and he looked at the second generation of offspring and saw that some of them did have green seeds. So this means that that genetic information of the recessive trait, it was still there and still being passed on. It was just hidden when that dominant yellow allele was present. So how did this happen? How did the recessive trait for green seeds disappear for an entire generation and then reappear in the next generation? Well, remember that each individual receives two copies of the gene, one from each parent. He took parents that only had green alleles and crossed them with parents that only had yellow alleles. And that way he knew exactly what the offspring would have. Every offspring from that cross got a green allele from one parent and a yellow allele from the other parent. So each one had both alleles, had one yellow and one green. And because yellow is dominant over green, every single one of those individuals expressed the yellow seed trait, not the green. But they still had that green allele in them. In the next step, he took individual plants that had both a yellow allele and a green allele. So he took plants from this generation that's outlined in red. And he bred them to each other, to other plants that had the exact same genetic makeup of a yellow allele and a green allele. And remember that segregation means that those alleles get split up when the plant reproduces. A parent plant doesn't give both alleles to the offspring. It only gives one to each offspring. So the dad plant gave half of their offspring a yellow allele, but half of them a green allele. And the mom plants also gave half of their offspring a yellow and half of them a green allele. And because it's random, um, some of the baby plants got a yellow allele from each parent, some got a yellow from one parent and a green from one parent, and some got a green from each parent. And you can see the offspring that got a green from each parent are the only ones who actually had a green trait because it wasn't covered up by yellow. Okay, so here we have green and green, recessive and recessive. There's no capital A. There's no yellow to cover it up, so it was able to be green. Here where we have a green, but then there's a yellow there, that yellow one is dominant, and so you can't even tell the green is there. Um, there are terms to describe the setup of alleles that any individual has, and you need to know these terms. If they have two copies of a dominant allele, in this example, two alleles for yellow seeds, they are called homozygous dominant. If they have two copies of the recessive version of the allele, so, for example, two alleles for green seeds, then they are homozygous recessive. And if they have two different alleles, in this example, one yellow and one green, they are heterozygous. Remember uh, the prefixes, homo means the same and hetero means different. These terms describe the genotype of the individual. A genotype is the genetic makeup of the alleles. It doesn't describe what the individual looks like, it describes 
the alleles that it has. But we could use the genotype to figure out the phenotype. That's the trait that is expressed, okay, so it says color. So you should notice that um, the heterozygous and homozygous dominant individuals have different genotypes but the same phenotypes. Okay, so for our examples up here, um, our heterozygous dominant has two yellow alleles and our, our heterozygous has one yellow and one green, but they have the same phenotype. They're both yellow and it's because they both have that dominant yellow one in there. So this one has no choice but to be yellow as two yellow alleles, but this one, the heterozygous, has one yellow, which is dominant over the green. So all you see is yellow. And then homozygous recessive has a different phenotype. It has the phenotype that's green because it, it only has green alleles. It has nothing else. So there's more to go over, but we're going to just pause for a minute and do a review here. Um, so again, if you're here live, I'm going to pop a question up on the screen for you to answer. Uh, for each gene, you have a copy from your mom and from your dad in every cell of your body, except each reproductive cell only ends up with one copy. So the separation of these two alleles in the reproductive cells is called what? We've got four words to choose from there, so just... There we go. So you should now see the poll on the screen. So if you're here live, you should answer it. Um, I'd like to see all of our attendees answer the question before I move on. So I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. Okay, so I think you can see um, the answers. And again, I have no idea who answered what. Half of you said independent assortment. And half of you said phenotypes, and or 25% said phenotypes, and 25 segregation. So that kind of tells me we need to go back to that term. Make sure we're sharing the screen still. Okay, so the term for that. is segregation. So remember, in all of your cells of your body, except for eggs and sperm, there are two of every gene. So for every gene, you inherited one copy from your mom and one copy from your dad. But it wouldn't make sense if you reproduce um, to give your offspring two copies, because the other parent is going to give two copies, and then it's going to have four copies, and then when they reproduce it, have eight. Um, so it, it, that would be kind of crazy after a while. So what happens is they split up in those reproductive cells. Um, and that splitting up is called segregation. So when we're talking about two copies of the same gene splitting up, the answer is segregation. So we go back to our question here. OK, um, so the first two are just it's kind of unrelated words that are also from this section. Segregation is the correct answer. And a lot of people said independent assortment, and that's something we're going to learn about in a minute. Um, I'm wondering if these are people that already read this section and they thought it was similar. Um, independent assortment is going to be something we're talking about multiple genes. So you have genes that... Um, are kind of unrelated, maybe one for, well, examples we use is uh, one for height and one for color. They're completely unrelated things, um, so those are going to be dealing with independent assortment. When we're talking about two copies of the same gene, so in this case, two copies of genes for color, you know, maybe the uh, yellow and the green and the gray genes for colors are different alleles, that's going to be segregation. Um, this is another review question, but I can't put it up as a poll because of the type of question it is, so just think about your answer. Match the genotype on the left to the description of what that type is on the right. So instead of using the letter A, we're using the letter X, but remember capital is still 
dominant and lowercase is recessive. So we have capital X, lowercase x, then we have two lowercase x's and we have two capital x's. So think about what those are. One of them is homozygous dominant, one of them is heterozygous, one of them is homozygous recessive. So I'll give you about 10 seconds to think about it before I show you the answers. So a capital X and a lowercase x. So we have a capital and a lowercase, one of each. That's going to be heterozygous. Remember, hetero means different. So you have two different alleles. The other two are homozygous. Homo means same. So you have homozygous recessive with the lowercase and homozygous dominant with the uppercase. And remember, all of these are describing genotypes. Genotype is this. It's just the setup of the alleles. Okay, not phenotypes. Phenotype means actually what trait you see, something like what color it is or how tall it is. That brings us to the end of this section. Um, come back next week for the next half of Chapter 11. And if you're not here live but you want some help, here are some ways that you can contact your instructors.